Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, my friend Greg and I will do a comparative review of two Pentax cameras from the mid-1970s. On the one hand, we have the Pentax ME, which is considered one of the smallest 35mm single-lens reflex cameras. Um, only comes with an aperture priority mode and was released in 1976. On the other hand, we have the Pentax K2, which um, is significantly heavier and larger, but also comes with a fully manual mode. In order to test these cameras properly, we went on two photo walks, one in Würzburg and the other one in Oxenfurt, shooting some Fuji Provia 100 in the Pentax ME and some Ilford FP4, um, which we rated at ISO 80 and uh, later developed in Ilford Perceptol, um, which we shot in the Pentax K2. Let's take a closer look at the two cameras and the images that we've taken. The camera development of the 1970s was characterized by technical advancements, especially in electronics, um, improved lens bayonets, um, but also increasingly an in ambition to cater to amateurs as well by creating cameras that are lighter, smaller and overall easier to use. The Olympus OM-1, which was released in 1972, really stands uh, as a testament to that and uh, is considered one of the smallest 35 millimeter single lens reflex cameras. And of course, other manufacturers wanted to follow here as well. Pentax reacted in two different ways. On the one hand, they introduced the new K series, um, which were three cameras introduced in 1975 at the same time. Um, the K2 was one of them and coming with a completely new lens mount, the so-called K mount. And what they wanted to do here is um, cater to professionals and their demands, um, kind of uh, live up to the expectations of their customers and also kind of be on par again with the competition who had introduced new lens mounts earlier. Um, but at the time, Pentax was still having the screw, screw mounts um, so with the Spotmatic camera. So this was an improvement already, but also offering cameras with a lot of professional features um, driven by electronics. On the other hand, they um, introduced the M-series um, with the Pentax ME in 1976, which really and obviously catered to amateurs. And you can really read this in the um, brochure that I had here that Greg um, happened to have reserved and that I could just pull out and read through. Um, it's all about bringing professional quality, a professional grade camera to the amateur and um, hobby photographer and giving them the opportunity to shoot great images. It's also running with a K-mount but um, has a different M-series uh, lens system, um, smaller, more compact um, lenses that come with the ME and were deliberately created, expl explicitly created for the M-series. The Pentax ME comes with an aperture priority mode with speeds ranging from 8 seconds all the way up to 1 1,000th of a second. In addition, there is a bulb mode and a completely mechanical fixed shutter speed 1 100th of a second mode, um, which is also the flash sync speed and is well suited if you are running out of batteries and just need this mechanical fallback, so to speak. 
In regular use, um, you would basically focus and set your aperture, and then the camera would select the correct shutter speed for you. Um, this, of course, makes it really easy to use. You just half press down the shutter, and then within the viewfinder, you have a set of LEDs indicating the um, shutter speeds that would be selected. And there are two additional indications, an over and under, which of course mean overexposure or underexposure respectively, and would prevent, prevent you from doing that or try to prevent you from doing that. Um, um, in addition, you have on the top of the camera uh, an exposure compensation dial, which at least lets you um, discuss or debate a little bit the, um, the, the correct exposure with the built-in center-weighted light meter. So if you disagree in a certain situation, you can just make use of the exposure compensation dial if you're more than an amateur and have some idea of what's going on here. Um, interestingly, the ISO settings are ranging from ISO 12 to 1600 and the camera's light meter is supported by a TTL gallium photodiode. Um, the camera runs on two LR44 standard battery cells and um, the only kind of additional feature is a self-timer that you have at the front of the camera. Um, other than that, you have a very simple design and layout. So what is missing? Um, Basically, the more advanced features of a typical single lens reflex camera, like a depth of field preview button, an automatic exposure lock function. Um, it does not display the aperture in the viewfinder, um, so the one that you've selected. And um, what is interesting is that it does not have any kind of dynamic dampers or counterbalances in order to um, work against the mirror slap. Um, that kind of flipping, the mirror flipping up always causes. And in this case here, it's rather directly transferred to the body. But during our tests, we didn't have any problems at all with slower shutter speeds and the mirror slap that is created here. Um, the camera weighs only 460 grams because of all that, which is really, really light, of course. And probably the best feature is the incredibly large viewfinder um, that comes with a 0.97 times magnification. So really, really big and unusual. While the camera is directed at amateurs, it still supports um, the automatic motor drive, which we happen to have here and use during most of our tests. And especially when shooting portraits, this automatic film advance is simply incredible and instantly turns the Pentax ME, despite being directed at amateurs, into quite a professional feeling tool. So I really appreciated that and um, liked shooting it this way, um, particularly because it remains such a small um, and compact package um, and still can compete with much later, um, more professional and advanced um, and of, of course also bigger single lens reflex cameras. Pentax K2 comes with a vertically moving metal shutter that was co-developed with Seiko. It supports speeds um, from 8 seconds all the way up to 1 1,000th of a second, so um, the same as the Pentax ME. But the difference here is that the speeds from 1 1 25th of a second to 1 1,000th of a second plus the bulb mode run purely mechanical. The flashing speed is also slightly different at 1 1 25th of a second. Um, the Pentax K2 also supports more advanced features like um, mirror lockup or an in, uh, a depth of field preview lever. And just like the ME, the camera also comes with an exposure compensation dial and a self-timer at the front. Interestingly, the ISO settings um, are also located at the front and around the lens mount um, and can be set between ISO 8 and all the way up to 60. Um, 
400, which of course is a larger um, range than on the Pentax ME. In contrast to the ME, the K2 features uh, both an aperture priority mode and a fully manual mode, and um, it is significantly bigger and weighs over 200 grams more, so it, just as the camera itself, it comes in at 680 grams, so quite heavy without any kind of a lens. Interestingly, the viewfinder is also slightly smaller than on the Pentax ME um, with a um, 0.88 times magnification. Um, the camera also runs on two LR44 batteries. So what about the lenses for these two Pentax cameras? Well, Pentax played a really important role in the history of lens design and most importantly in lens coatings. And in order to fully appreciate that, we have to do a quick excursion to fundamental physics and talk about light. Because light in general, when traveling through the border between two substances, transparent substances with different density, the light is bent or refracted, as it is called. And in ideal conditions, uh, all the light would be refracted and bent, but in the real world, uh, what happens is that about 95% of the light is um, refracted and about 5% is reflected. So reflected back into the substance from which it is coming from. So um, think about the light around you and maybe the window in front of you. What happens is the light is traveling to that window, the border between air and glass, and it's refracted there, and then it is refracted again when um, leaving, so to speak, um, on the other side and changing from glass to air again. And if you think about that and then transfer it to how a photographic lens is designed, this whole thing becomes a nightmare because you have several lens surfaces stacked next, next to each other and you have a little air in between, uh, rooms of air, so to speak. And uh, that means that um, naturally you only have a very limited, you would only have a limited amount of light hitting the film plane in the first place. So would you, you would lose a lot of light. Plus, because of the reflections, um, you get all sorts of um, flare and ghosts in your final image. And in order to tackle that problem, scientists created chemical coatings for glass surfaces in order to um, reduce the reflections as much as possible. And here, Pentax in 1971 patented and first applied the so-called super multi-coating, um, or it was later called SMC, and they renamed all of the lenses, the screw-mount lenses at the time, to super multi-coated um, um, Takumars or SMC Takomars, as they were later called. And um, interestingly, initially, they only focused on the surfaces here between glass and air. Um, when introducing the new K-mount lenses and also the M-series that we're talking about, they really upped their game and um, used the same coding technology on all glass surfaces, regardless of whether they are glass on glass or um, glass on air. Um, so this really, really improves the overall quality of these lenses and um, the Pentax lenses in general are famous for this SMC coat, this SMC, the super multi-coating. Um, in a later brochure from the 1980s, and I have to read this here, um, Pentax describes SMC as the following, quote, a remarkable seven layer lens coating process that cuts the reflection ratio down to just 0.2% per lens surface. The result is a dramatic improvement in both color fidelity and brightness and the elimination of flare and ghost images." Unquote. So until today, Pentax SMC Taco Mars are considered very good and solid performers. And in our test, we used a wide range of different Pentax lenses for both the K-series and the M-series. 
and um, we, we cannot complain. Um, we, did, we didn't notice anything bad. We got great color. Um, we didn't have any problems with flare or ghosting. And overall, we got incredible sharpness. And this is maybe the most important advice here that um, if you are interested in um, shooting these lenses on a digital camera, we can highly encourage you doing that because these um, well-coded um, SMC lenses um, work perfectly fine on digital as well. And if you're, even if you're interested in scanning your film with a digital camera, we can highly recommend one of the macro lenses from the Pentax SMC series. Um, again, looking back at our two cameras here, um, it does not make much of a difference, um, the two um, lens series, so the K-series and the M-series. The M-series is a little bit smaller and more compact, which is nice. But in general, looking at our camera back here and all the stuff that we were able to carry with it in the Pentax um, um, system, um, it is quite impressive and you can see how compact this system is. So if you want it more compact, go for the M-series. Um, if you um, don't mind having uh, sparing a bit more room, so to speak, then go for the K-mount. So what about our personal impressions? Personally, I really preferred shooting the um, Pentax ME. Its lightness and simple handling really made it a joy to use and the compact size of the lenses even reminded me a little bit of shooting a Leica M to be honest. Um, what I liked most is the incredibly bright and light viewfinder with the easy to read um, shutter speed information in the LEDs and how smoothly it worked hand in hand with the um, motor drive. And especially while shooting portraits, I, I enjoyed that so much. Um, being in the situation, remaining in the situation, shooting that portrait without having to take down um, the camera and advance um, with your thumb manually, and um, still ha retaining that feeling of a mid-1970s camera and not something that is somewhere in the 90s or early 2000s and it's completely automatic. You still feel, okay, you know what's going on and it's not incredibly fast, but it's just a joy to use and works really, really nice and solid. In contrast, the Pentax K2 to me felt like a hefty latecomer to a party where everyone was already looking for smaller, um, lighter, um, in easier to use cameras. So a little bit outdated, so to speak. And in my opinion, from today's perspective, when you can actually select which kind of SLR you would go for, if you don't mind the heftiness and the form factor, I would personally still recommend going for something that justifies this form factor better. So that comes with more features and a better interior, so to speak, more advanced metering technology and, and all that is out there. Um, and not necessarily have the heftiness and uh, kind of the weight without uh, so many features. But that's of course a personal um, thing. This would be my recommendation. Looking at the two cameras, for me, the Pentax ME definitely wins.
So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Pentax K2 and the Pentax ME. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.